Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today we are taking a look at my little mining farm. Let's start with the hardware. Probably that's why you're here. Then go over airflow, cooling and lastly power distribution. If you saw my opinion piece about the recent kryptonite miners, you already know my bikels. So these are Giant Plus multi-algorithm miners for X11, X13, X15, Quark and Qubit. And that is a reason I have liked Baikal in the past. Because the miners gave you some diversity. Now, of course, I'm critical about the recent Kryptonite equipment dump, which you can check out in the top right corner. But these machines have really served me well. I have to mention that each and every piece of equipment you see has already paid for itself. Except, of course, it's some crazy new experiment. But then you get to see it on this channel. The Baikals run between 1600 and 2000 um, mega hashes, depending on the algorithm. And there was actually a time where 2 giga hashes on Dash were pretty profitable. You won't believe. Also, honorable mention goes to projects like Deep Onion on X13, which is still a pleasure to mine and is also stakeable. So I want to give you regular updates how my farm develops, but since this is the first time I just want to introduce you to the equipment I'm working with and if you see something you're interested in and want to know more about, just tell me in the comments. I'd be happy to share and learn together. Let's continue to my little hypocrisy, my Antminer L3+. Plus. So I love Litecoin and some other script projects like Game Credits, but I'm very critical about the manufacturers of the Antminer Bitmain especially of the power they have and their policies. Still I can't hate on them since I've profited a lot from their existence. And besides one of my first gaming graphic cards, which was a NVIDIA 650 Ti, the USB miner, end miner U1 and U2, as well as the S1, was among the first miners I had. And I've learned so much in the time that I always have to be open about both sides. I also promise that I'll always be honest about these things on this channel. Back to the L3 Plus. I have to say that again, thanks to the Baikals, the L3 Plus was an easy investment. Diversify and multiply. I sold another giant at good timing and it was one of these times when, for a change, Bitcoin was on your side. So I ended up actually earning money by upgrading from a giant to a L3 Plus and I've not regretted the machine ever. It hasn't spied on me or my house yet <laughs> and in the first month that I had him I really experimented a lot on script coins. For example I got a lot of verge before McAfee realized he could make money on altcoins and <laughs> this would have paid an L3 Plus alone and if you don't know this particular scene please google how to uninstall McAfee antivirus. <laughs> but back to script mining not McAfee. Uh, there are some exotic coins too on script. I don't want to say they are all shit coins, sorry. But you can mine some of them, hold them for a time and trade. But that needed time, but still it could be profitable. Now he is just set and forgot, overclocked as hell on Litecoin all the way. Talking about Baikal and times where X11 was mineable with small machines, I show you the smallest one in the bunch, the Baikal Mini Quadruple. And yep, they. They really got a bit strange with the names, but <laughs> this one is a special case. Um, he's either a sick and buggy machine or a Chinese spy. <laughs> and I'll explain why. Every time he is cut from power, he forgets all his settings. And when it restarts, he mines on default settings, which is for Baikal, of course. It has run stable for months and months, but at some point started to react that way. And <laughs> that's the reason why I did not sell him along with his brothers, to be honest. And I never got around to try to bug fix it. So I kept him as a little memento of some good old times, which you can see here. Then you already know my mixed mining mutant from my other videos. And he's not with the rest of the miners because in winter he's actually heating my office. Together with um, workstations, which are mining too, of course. An anecdote here is that I always had an oven for wood as a heating solution in my office. And before mining I was carrying wood about every two days. And since I've put the mining rigs in the office in winter, I did not need any wood at all. <laughs> so that's another positive. Also, you know that I have an Octominer board waiting to be built out and it's still sitting in its box. 
Um, some people have complained about my review that I did not fully build it out right then and there. And of course you were absolutely right, but the time was not right yet. I'm still waiting for the case and for a change Octominer was taking longer than expected, but you will see the build as soon as all the parts arrive. In regards to airflow and cooling, I'm pretty lucky. I have a big cellar and before I was mining, the basement was pretty cold, even moist. And after the army of Baikal Mini quadruple moved in, the cellar was completely dry and the warmth rising is actually heating my whole house in winter. So this big fan you see is the only real air solution I need for now. In winter I was directing the heat towards the inside of my house and now that it's slowly getting warmer I'm opening the window and directing it outside. So outside the solar system. <laughs> My office space gets very warm in summer too, so then also the rigs will move down here. And I still want to do a lot more in this regard, so... I'm thinking, for example, of building silent boxes for the ASICs, since they can be heard in my house. It's not bad and it's not disturbing me, but the quieter and the stealthier, the better in my opinion. In terms of power distribution, I'm lucky again. And on this note, a big shout out to my friend we call Yoko, because without an electrician as friend, this could have become very expensive. I'm lucky that my house already has two power circuits, one for the whole house and one only for the cellar, because the heating system is connected here. The one in the basement is powerful enough that we could divide it even further in three different circuits, which I can now control from the room behind my mining room. And we also installed an analog power meter, which only measures my mining room, so I can keep my overall power consumption in view. And lastly, just a little thing back inside the room, which, which I want to share and which annoys me, is that I'm still using this large switch, even though I don't need it anymore. I already got a smaller one, as you can see, but if you did the math, you know five slots is too little. It's the small things, but mining is also all about efficiency, so an eight-way or a 10-way switch would be better. So in the end, just thank you very much for tuning in. This is still a rather new channel, but I'm already very thankful for all the feedback I'm getting. It has only been three weeks, but I can already say that I've learned a lot of new stuff. And I really hope that you learned something new too from watching my videos. I'll do my best to keep it up. I want to do weekly videos on everything mining and tech. And if time allows it or if something current comes up, I want to do more videos. If you like this video, please like or subscribe to our channel. If you did not like it, please tell me what I could do better or what you would like to see. And thank you very much. That's it. Bye.